Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, Run Blog Run. It is our program, Socialing the Distance. We're with Jordy Beamish. He is a um, former NAU athlete, and he is now with On Athletics, the OAC. And he's being coached by Dathan Ritzenheim. Uh, just so you know, Dathan was one of my records in terms of interviews. I've done 12 with him. First one when he was 15, and um, talked to him about three weeks ago. And he is the happiest guy, happiest I've ever seen coaching. He is so into it, and it's like a perfect thing for him. How are you guys doing? Yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> I've got that same feeling from from Dathan, actually, over the last couple of months. He's always just absolutely buzzing to be around us and, and yeah. to be doing <laughs> doing this, which is which is pretty cool to be, be a part of, actually. Um, definitely being a big part of the transition, obviously to any new coach, but um, yeah, I feel like um, we've all had a really good connection with him already. Good. You were with an amazing program, you know, uh, Anna, you uh, just killer. And I always liked watching like the pictures I saw you guys, like you guys were always smiling. You seemed like you had a great time. And that's one of the things about being a team and really busting your chops together and doing it for the, you know, the good of the team. Um, how was – you had a good time at NAU? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, what you said about um, kind of how, to, how good that program is, is that, you know, that was a big part of the decision to either to leave um, or stay another year is that, you know, to put yourself in a better situation <clears throat> than being at NAU is, yeah. is pretty difficult, actually, because wow. yeah. you know, that's one of the best training groups in the country pro or amateur with one of the best coaches in the country and one of the best training locations in the country. So to find something, you know, that rivals that or that, you know, improves that situation was pretty hard to do in the first place. And I think that's pretty incredible that Mike Smith created that on a, on a college team where, you know, going pro is not, not the obvious option um, mm -hmm. when, when you've got it so good and on a college team. Um, For sure. But yeah, made, loved it. What made it so good at NAU? It's a good question. It's hard to hard to kind of put your finger on um, on any one thing. Um, Give me the first three things that come to mind. Um, Mike Smith. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Flagstaff, and I think just kind of the you know way like the traditions from cool. from back in the day kind of still trying to do stuff the old the old way when you ran your 356 um and milrose were you surprised by that um no no i wouldn't say so i think i mean i think that that run was a long time coming i just yeah. never i hadn't run in a sea level mile since um, my freshman year and I mean I wanted to run faster ideally sure sure uh, as as always but no I think that would that was around that was about ballpark I'd say for that day okay. um so you, you've just gone from one of the top programs in the country you're with the OAC sponsored by on athletics got a coach Dathan Ritzenheim guy who's you know I mean i so when I met him, he was running cross country at Foot Locker. He's 15 years old, and him and his <laughs> classmate yeah. won one too. Um, you know, watched the guy in all his Olympic stuff, his World Championships. You know, I was there when he ran 12:56 for the 5,000, and I was there when he ran his 2:07. Um, so he's got a hell of a lot of experience. And and um, what put you over the top? Why did you decide to go with the OAC? Yeah, so I think interestingly enough, I think it had nothing to do with how good Ritz was as a runner or how fast he had ever run. Sure. Um, yeah. I think pretty early on, I realized that he was just a person that, you know, I could I could trust to, to steer my running in the right direction. And um, he just came across as, you know, so enthusiastic and... Um, you know, so easy to talk to about, about a number of things. And, and for me specifically, 
um, with a history of of struggling with pretty regular injuries. Um, you know, he was a guy that he's he's had injuries that I've never I can't even pronounce. I haven't even yeah, heard yeah. of the injuries he's had. Yeah, you know, he yeah. had something like fifteen stress fractures through his career and yeah. like four or five surgeries. <laughs> the guy knows a thing or two about that, and yeah. you know that was pretty important for me. Um, mm-hmm. Getting into a situation where you know, I had a coach that had experience with it and was prepared to tailor, you know, training and um, and just life really specifically toward for someone like me that that needed something kind of specific to to hopefully stay healthy. I think that was that was the biggest thing. Just um, was the relationship I formed with Nathan really quickly, kind of yeah. over the phone. The first, you know, in those first few conversations. What's it like training in Boulder? Um, yes, you probably have to ask the other guys about that. I haven't really been doing much training. <laughs> okay. Um, again, okay. Still fairly injured. Um, uh-huh. I've just been doing a little bit of easy jogging. Okay. Lately, trying to get back into it. Um, okay. So, mostly either on the Ultra G at Dathan's mm-hmm. house or we're yeah. doing some lifting. Otherwise, I mostly only run kind of four or five miles. I haven't done a workout yet, so. Okay. No. What no. What are your What are your um, What are your dreams? What What's the ultimate? When you look back at your career, what will be the ultimate mark of success for you? I think. Just in having a career that um, that I can be proud of, and that I enjoyed my time running, um, and felt like I was doing something something worthwhile. I think. Okay. All right. Um, you competed in Jordan, ran your PB five thousand there. Uh, tell tell my readers uh, or viewers or whatever the hell they call them, um, uh, who haven't been to Peyton Jordan. I think it's a pretty magical event. You know, I think I went there every year for almost 20 years. It's where I'd see all the coaches. I mean, I lived in Wisconsin, but the only place I'd see Schumacher was, and the crew was up there, you know. And yeah. uh, what's it about that event that that it just brings the best out of people? Yeah, it really does, actually. Um, I think I think the meet just does a really good job of getting getting the right people there. And kind of, I think the timing is also important kind of yeah. in that yeah um, was it the last last week of april or the first week of may yeah yeah i think that timing is just good mm. the weather is like beautiful it, they they have it pretty late it gets pretty cold so it's nice for those distance races um and i think the collegians are always just like if you're lucky enough to race there as a collegian um so many pros there to to inspire you and and kind of just being in a race with them gets you fired up, I think. You uh, talked in uh, your interview on on site about, uh, you asked about breakfast, <laughs> and you said burrito 100%. So do you have a, I used to go to these, we call them the war wagons in the morning. I worked at Runner's World for eight years, and you know we get our morning run in, and uh, then uh, we uh, would go and get the most, disgusting breakfast burritos you know every piece of meat potatoes you know a lot of hot salsa do you have a special make of burrito that uh, you appreciate um i mean yeah there, i mean obviously there there's some good ones and some bad ones but i think the closest i've got to perfection is the the tourist home breakfast burrito and flag stuff so if anyone oh, really? reading is ever in flag stuff go to tourist home get the breakfast burrito we will put something, we will hashtag it for you, man. Okay. So this, this will be a clip. Cause so what we do is we do the whole interview, uh, Jordy, and then we break it up into clips and people, you know, we put it out everywhere. So people like it. So, you know, it'll be the, you know, the Jordy fan club. So boys in the hood, I like the shirt too. That is very classic old school, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah it's a good one. You know, I have a Grandmaster Flash shirt, you know, and a few of the uh, uh, stuff from the late se- late '80s and early '90s. And uh, but Boys in the Hood is a good shirt. Um, the um, so you've run. What, what is what do you think your dream distance is? 
Um, I think it's I think it's five k if I okay. ever can train enough to be able to race that distance. I think I've just been stuck at these these lower distances just because uh-huh. I haven't I just haven't been able to train. I've been yeah. able to train really. Um, like I can only I've only been running enough to get fit for for a few laps. Um, but I think you know a little bit older and been able to get healthy for a while i think Mm -hmm. i think the 5k the um how do you juggle you're talking about injuries um do you have to juggle hard days easy days is there like a hard day and then you have a couple more modest days what what have you what have you learned from dealing with the injury cycle yeah i mean absolutely i had probably a different like different training schedule to a lot of people at um kind of my last probably couple of years in AU or my last year I was just running five days a week um like taking two days completely off running and mm-hmm. um maybe trying to run just running probably 40 40 to 45 miles a week or something that was kind of okay. Okay. what was working for a while um but even then uh kind of March, April this year, I still managed to fracture both my tibias running 40 miles a week. So haven't, haven't figured it out yet, but okay. working on it. <laughs> How do you like the, what, what do you think of the alter G? <laughs> um, useful, not very okay. enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering how it's uh, gotta be a big difference. And I mean, treadmills drive me crazy enough and I, use them when there's a lot of snow or it's over minus 50 in Wisconsin. And, uh, the, yeah. uh, so, you know, you, 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 they have a use, but dear God, you better have a good movie on or, or something, or you're going to lose your mind. But uh, I, know. I just have to, I just have to read Dathan's paint cans in the back of his garage right now, which is, <laughs> I've been reading the same paint cans for the last two months. Yeah. At least he could change some for you. You know, that's, yeah. that's the big thing. Um, so what do you, I, I've asked, I, I talked, I, I've interviewed the women in the club and one of the questions I asked them is, do they see themselves competing till 2028? Do you see that? Do you put a time frame on your career? Um, is it running healthy and seeing uh, personal bests or seeing challenges met? Um, I mean, you're a young guy and, you know, it's kind of hard to think past the next day a lot of times, but distance runners are, are those, they, they're rather, you know, they think about a lot of things, you know, obsessed sometimes. Um, do you think about the length of your career? Um, no, I did not very often. I mean, I think if I ever, if it crosses my mind, I think 2028, 20, no problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you um, you want to represent New Zealand? Yeah, absolutely. I, have you have you done that in an international event before? Mm, no, actually, I okay. haven't. Okay. Um, do you know a lot about the tradition of your country? Um, I mean, only those guys that you mentioned. I mean, yeah, pretty outstanding kind of twenty or so years. Um, yeah. With those guys, they were, they were a good group. Walker and and uh, Quacks and Dixon were always a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, they always had the best sense of humor. There's a <laughs> a great story about Dixon um, doing a two mile, and he went to pull his sweats off, and he forgot to put his shorts on, so he <laughs> showed the entire crowd his jock, and Seb Co had just run and. 800 meters and Seb was about you know was pretty small and they put people around him and Seb pulled his shorts off and gave him to put his sweats on gave him to Rod and the picture is classic you know and we've never let him forget it but it's just the kind of stuff that you know you can nice. you can mess with you know it just keeps it fun but um and then you got you know Nick Willis you know who's one of the you know most enduring um uh, and just one of the nicest guys. Uh, I know. Incredible. You know, 
Incredible well, Danny, I, I never thought he got credit for Rio, man, because he had the fastest finish there in that last 50 meters. Um, do you watch a lot of the, I mean, are, because of your generation, you know, you see everything on YouTube now. Do you spend time watching like track meets and stuff like that on, on YouTube or are you, are there races that you like to check out? Is, is do you learn from those things or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a fanatic. Um, yeah. I'm not religiously watching everything, but yeah. no, I definitely make a point to, to kind of keep, keep in touch with those kind of races online and mm -hmm. um yeah when dathan talks to you about uh where he sees you going does he um talk to you about the five thousand, or does he try to throw in thinking about that little longer race you know that has 25 laps <laughs> no that that's never been mentioned <laughs> have you done the 10 on the track no okay thanks uh, all right. Yeah. It's, it's, just it's, on the grass. You could have two burritos and floss your teeth, you know, during a tent <laughs> sometimes. So it's, uh, right. the, um, what do you, what, what do you see is, um, why do you like the 5,000? Um, I don't know. I think it, the right combination of, of tactical racing and, and I think it, it kind of suits, well, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't figured it out, but I think it would suit, my kind of running. Um, mm -hmm. I just think to be a world class 1500 guy, you got to run like 144 in the 800. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Do so. you see um, when you, um, so you've run 356. What do you think you could run in the mile? Healthy and um, with the right competition? <laughs> I have no clue. Um, okay, okay. I mean, I think I, I think I run a good mile one day. Are are times more important to you, or is being a good racer more important to you? I think definitely being a good racer. I think winning is just more fun than running fast. Sure. Um, do you think you have a pretty uh, wicked finish? Um. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Okay. What's yep. your ideal race? Holding on with guys till about 200 to go and cranking on them? Or do you try to take them apart a little earlier? Mm -hmm. Maybe like three, 400. Okay. 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 When, you, how do you feel? Do you know when you're really putting it together? Can you tell when you're about ready to move? In a race? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think I think I could probably get a bit better at that. I think even this indoors actually. I feel yeah. like sometimes I think it it's getting harder than it really is. Yeah, and then I end up having more left. What, but that's what, pretty common. Yeah, no, it is. Well, you've got you know, in, in one of the races that you're in, you have so many good athletes, and it's um. Do you find yourself? In, in races like we ran the 356 when you're in 744, did you find yourself intimidated by people in the field? Do you feel, or do you always feel that, hey, I can compete with these guys? I think Milro is probably a little bit intimidating. Um, yeah. Sure. And I was, my fitness was pretty unknown going into that. Okay. Sure. I felt like I could hang on, but I honestly didn't really know how that was going to go. Um, but the 3K in Boston, I think I was way more confident for. And yeah. I think just having like Luis and Tyler with me as well just made me way more mm -hmm. confident and comfortable in that race. And we just like <clears throat> were running at the front, just the three of us, which, which, was, which was pretty cool. The, uh, yeah. When you did the um, uh, Milrose, did you get time to enjoy the crowd and to see how crazy they were? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's an incredible atmosphere. I'd love to go back. Um, yeah, the 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 introduction. Yeah, I, yeah. I was at, I was at the old meets too, and I always kind of got excited when they'd say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the Wanamaker, you know, Milrose Mile, and uh, it's uh, and, and in the Armory, it's a smaller facility, 
I, which the, the tracks a lot better because the one in Madison Square Garden sucked. It again was about 168 yards, yeah. and it, it it bounced a little bit. You know, I, I'm still amazed the guys could run. You know that that Lagat ran under 350 on it. You know, it just totally blows my mind. You know, it's and, insane uh, to think about. When um, when you trained at NAU, you were always training at altitude. Um, did you? Um, you function pretty well training at altitude. Did you have yeah, issues? I think, so. with it? I think I think it kind of helped that I was running a bit less, but I was getting uh-huh. getting a bit more bang for my buck because I was doing yeah. it all out yeah. altitude. I think that was actually that was pretty helpful. Um, just been kind of taking advantage of that altitude without having to run very much. Um, I seem to still get pretty fit, and then mm-hmm. yeah, I enjoy but, it. As you and Dathan are developing your training program, do you see what I call alternative training, ultra G, swimming, stuff like that as being a part of your regimen? Yeah, I think it probably will be. I think a lot of my doubles will be on the ultra G, even if I, even when I do get healthy. Um, and then, yeah, I think there's, there's no chance I'll be running seven days a week. Um, yeah five, maybe six days a week with a, with a day cross training. I'm sure. Yeah. Do, uh, do you do much core work? I mean, yeah. 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 I, I think, yeah, we, we do a bit in part of our, our lifting program. Um, yeah. Cause Dathan doesn't seem to leave anything to chance. I mean, one of the things that I like about him in, one of the things I think that you'll see and probably what you saw with your former coach too, is they teach you how to race and help you use your best talents. Um, what about, um, so did you, when you decided on the OAC, um, instead of taking another year in college, was it a tough decision for you? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I I love flag stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, I was I was really close with the team, and that was definitely yeah. going to be hard to leave behind, um, no matter where I was going. Um, it made it even more difficult the fact that I had a bit of an opportunity to stay. Um, but I think I five years was a long time. Yeah, being there. yeah. I think I I was ready for a change. Um, ready for something new um and yeah happy with the decision i made okay um in the interview on the on site you talked about your big brother is he an athlete too um yeah he used to be more of an athlete (laughs) now Uh he's just he's a lot older than me Uh um he ran for villanova oh cool um he graduated in 2012. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, he was pretty good. Also got injured a lot. Yeah. Like me. Um, um, did you ever consider Villanova when you were thinking about school? Yeah. Yeah. I considered it. Um, I chatted with Marcus um, a little bit um, yeah. and I, I really liked him. Um, but I think, I wanted to do something different to my brother. Cool. Kind of write my own story. And I also didn't want to be on the East Coast. It's <laughs> yeah. A lot further from New Zealand as well, partly. Yeah. It's way harder yeah. to get to. Um, that's another thing. I mean, you've traveled halfway around the world um, to go to school. Um, do you get back to New Zealand often? Yeah. Um, Reasonably, once a year normally. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I try and get back for Christmas most yeah. years. Um, see the family and all. How big yeah. is the family? Um, I have three siblings. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. And where? what uh, city are you guys located in in New Zealand? Um, not really a city. We live in Hawke's Bay. It's okay. like a region in the uh-huh. east coast of North Island. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was coming to, well, going to Flagstaff, that must have been a huge culture shock for you? 
Um, definitely, definitely a little bit. Um, uh-huh. I think it's it's kind of in the New Zealand way of life though, of people traveling and and seeing the world. I feel like that you know it's not it's not as big a deal. I feel like as as kids in America. I feel like even going across the country to university. Um, yeah. I feel like everyone in New Zealand at some point kind of wants to get out and see the world. And I think that's just like part of the New Zealand culture is doing that. So I think, you know, I was more comfortable with it than, than most. What is uh, the workout that when you do it tells you that you are ready to roll? Do you have a, like a favorite workout? You know, I don't think, I don't think I really ever did have something like that. I feel Mm -hmm. like Smith never really had like a, the only workouts we'd ever repeat were like threshold and sub threshold runs, Mm -hmm. like all his track workouts. I feel like they were different every time we did it. Oh, that's cool. He never had like, I feel like that would just like, that's not something he wants to be like having the exact same program year mm-hmm. after year. It's yeah. so like every, every year of cross country, we did different workouts. Mm-hmm. Like every single workout was different, which is kind of fun. Makes it a bit more interesting. And yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want you to compare workouts to previous ones. Um, and that's a lot easier to do when you're doing the same workouts over and over again. Is there a type of workout that you absolutely despise, but you know that you need to do it? <laughs> um, no, I feel like I feel like I enjoy. I kind of don't have a hated workout. Yeah, well, that's cool. I kind of go all right with all of them. Mm-hmm. What made Mike Smith special? What made him? How it, so? First, I have never met him. All I've heard is good things about him. You know, um, Galen. Uh, we just one of my writers just interviewed uh, Galen, and Galen has just been raving about how thoughtful he was and thoughtful he is. Um, and what I've heard in interviews, um, the athletes from NAU, they just love him. Uh, what made him special for you? Why, why did it work for you and him? Um, I think there's just this like, this like trust and respect between athlete and coach. It kind of goes both ways that, you know, he always has your best interest at heart and kind of vice versa. Like just the, yeah, I feel like the respect he has for you as an athlete and like as an individual is, is just second to none. Um, Yeah. When you, when you talked to Dathan and you said you've had a few conversations with them, obviously, and you, that helped you make the decision. Um, how do you see a, a, a successful coach athlete relationship? You talked about trust. Um, is there like a, is a coach your friend? Is a coach not your friend? Is there a little bit of difference between them? You know, I coached for 16 years. When I coached junior kids, I made sure that there was a difference between me coach and them athlete. When I started coaching adults, you know, in June, I coached uni and junior college. It was a little different because I felt I was more of an advisor. Um, how do you see the relationship with you and Dathan? Yeah, I think there's definitely a fine line. Um, I think when you get to this level between, between friend and coach, I think you kind of, you kind of dip between that line um, kind of constantly um, depending on the situation. Um, but I think with any coach, I think the most important thing is just communicating with them. I think that was a big thing in AU as well. Um, is that like, I think no, nothing is too little, like no kind of setback or feeling or any questions you have. I feel like is like, there's, there's gotta be no like limit to, to that kind of communication. And mm-hmm. cause I think holding anything back in either to the, from the coach or coach from the athlete, I think just creates, creates like an unhealthy coaching environment. Um, something you got to be able to ask about sure. like why you're doing this training or why you're not doing this training. And I think just being able to have those conversations and then um, are important with any coach. But yeah, I think 
I think Dave and I already have a, a pretty a good relationship with that just because I've been been stuck at his house more than anyone else on the team, um, which is which has been actually a good way to start the the sure. kind of relationship. Um, I recall in my um, limited running back in the old days, in the middle of a, a 20 times a 400 session, and I felt really, really good. And my coach walked over to me and said, um, yeah, you're not doing 20. You've got two more to go. I want to see how fast you can go. And <clears throat> when I did it, I felt really good. And afterwards, he said, I wanted you to finish feeling really good. How do you feel if a coach, if, if Dathan comes up to you during a workout and you say you guys planned, you know, uh, uh, a 5K or, or a tempo at, you know, uh, 450 pace and then you're going to do a couple 1Ks and he looks at you and he says, hey, you're not going to do two 1Ks. I'm going to have you do one and I want you to do this. Are you OK with that improvisation during a workout? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm pretty questioning. Of, yeah. of any cool training, so I definitely ask why. But Good. I think if you if you want a coach that is never going to change your workout, um, get one on the internet. <laughs> That's not going to yeah. be yeah. working. Good. That's awesome, man. Well, you no survived otherwise in person. Jordan, you survived thirty five minutes with me so far, so we're down to the last few minutes. Okay, so uh, here's the tough questions now. Okay. Is there an athlete you admire? An active athlete you admire right now? Give me an active athlete you admire right now. Running athlete or in, in any athlete? Um, any athlete. Um, yeah, I think um, I probably, my two favorite athletes are probably Lewis Hamilton and Roger Federer. Cool, like cool. Not if, you, <laughs> if you were not doing the 5,000 in track, uh, what field event would you do? Um, hmm. That's a good question. Maybe like Jeff. Uh, I don't know if I'm a jumper or a thrower. Yeah. Maybe like triple jump. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I, taught, I interviewed Michael Jordan and he asked me what track event I'd have him do and I said triple. And he said, why? <laughs> I said, well, because you're vertical leap, man. I said, give me five weeks. I get you over 55 feet. <laughs> and uh, it was, which was fun. Um, is there a, so you like tennis, you like uh, um, uh, auto racing. Um, uh, do you, um, do you watch sports on TV? Yeah. Is that, is that like, what is your favorite sport to watch on TV? Um, rugby or tennis, probably. Okay. From rugby or tennis. Are there things that we could do better in athletics to sh to cover it? Because a lot of times people tell me athletics is pretty damn boring. You know, when I bring, you know, when I try to get my girlfriend to watch a meet, you know, she is not a track fan. There's times when she really likes some of the stuff and the way it's presented. Um, and, you know, my dad was like that too. You know, he would watch it because, you know, I was involved with it. But um, is there some, if you were in charge of track and field, here's the question. You're in charge of track and field for a day. What one thing would you do for track on TV to change it? Hmm. I think from, from Formula One, we got to get champagne on the podiums. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yeah, you know what I really liked was I knew uh, a guy at another shoe company who did the boots for the Formula One guys, you know, because sometimes the cars would get so hot. I always wanted a pair of them. I thought they were totally <laughs> cool. Um, nice. The, um, do you... Do you want to race in New Zealand again? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's just um, hard to find the level of racing in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But I think, I think it's, it's possible. Do you want to, um, d will you, t to compete for New Zealand, are you selected or do you have to go over to the championships and run over there? Um, or is it no. a I mean, Nick you would tell me that he had to do a bunch of races under 337, and then he had a race over there too. I mean, it was sounded like a pretty complicated situation. I think um, hitting the standard will do the trick. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, do you are, are you a music fan? 
Yeah. Okay. What's your what What do you listen to when you're on the Alter G? Or do you listen to music when you're on the Alter G? I do actually. Yeah. Um. Anything specific, or is it just like uh, trying to keep you really. from the absolute boredom? Just, okay. Yeah. Just anything to to get me through a bit of time. Well, Jordan, yeah. you survived 39 minutes in 10 seconds. So we're down to the last 40 before it cuts off. I want to thank you for the time. You've been great. I really want to meet you at a race. And, uh, you know, afterwards, we'll, we'll perhaps have a pint or something uh, if you do that. And um, stay healthy. Enjoy your time with Dathan. Um, you're going to have some good races next year. And I look forward to meeting you at one of them. So. Um, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance, and we featured uh, Jordy Beamish, and he is competing for the OAC on Athletic Club, and uh, he's a Kiwi, so we like him, and, uh, and he went to NAU, so we like him there too. But, Jordy, thank you again. You did a great job. Great shirt. Best shirt so far of any of my interviews. So, you know, I like it when people, you know, do their thing, you know, and you've got Walker's hair length too, so <laughs> that makes you strong as well. Yeah, the... Look up the picture of him on uh, YouTube when he ran his 349. It's it's the iconic picture of a guy going running the mile. It's just it's yeah. one of my favorites. But Jordy, thank you very much. Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is socialing the distance, the epilogue. We just interviewed Jordy Beamish, and just to remind you, please support our social media with a like. And please subscribe to our YouTube. The way we get paid is through advertising and through eyeballs. And uh, your support means you love us. You really love us, as Sally Field. Oh, go look her up on Google, said. Anyway, uh, Jordy Beamish. Uh, so uh, Jordy's uh, 356.9 miler, 744, 3000, 1331 for five. Did it off about 45 miles a week was on the NCAA champion cross country team at NAU coached by Mike Smith. Um, he's a Kiwi. So we got to like him. He's a good guy. Um, he has been dealing with injuries and that's always challenging. And Dathan's got him doing the alter G in his garage or garage as Elton John calls it. Um, and, uh, He's tired of looking at paint cans, so I think he wants to get outside and uh, get some running in. But good guy. I think that um, he's going to go a long way with Dathan. Uh, the challenge is, is how do you take someone who's rather sometimes has a, a proclivity for injuries, and how do you break that injury cycle? And that's going to be the challenge for Dathan. Um, I think that um, uh, Jordy's got the, the head – and the ability to go far. He wants to be a 5,000 meter runner. There's some great ones out of lovely New Zealand. Uh, Dick Quacks, uh, Rod Dixon, uh, even John Walker ran a, a mean 5,000. And our friend Nick Willis has as well. Um, and Jordy is a pragmatist. He said that, you know, being a miler means he needs to run about 144, 143 for the 800. And he just doesn't think he can do that. And, uh, you know, knowing yourself, is good, but getting that mile speed down there uh, with a 356, he ran off, you know, about 45 miles a week. Hell, I think he could probably run a 352, but you know, we'll see. And uh, I told him I'd look forward to seeing him this spring in a race. I want him, you know, we we hope that he can get stays healthy and he has uh, a lot of fun working with uh, Joe Clecker and the group and uh, working with uh, his new coach, Dathan. He really admired Mike Smith, the coach at NAU. All I've heard is good things about Mike. I'd love to meet him and interview him someday. Um, he just sounds like a class act. And again, um, you know, we really espouse the whole idea of a coach-athlete relationship. You know, my, uh, when I worked at Runner's World, my boss was a guy named Derek Clayton. Derek was the world record holder in the marathon. And uh, in moments of uh, levity, Derek told me the only thing that he missed in his career was having a coach. And um, a coach is someone, and it's different at different times, who can tell you when to stop, when to push it, who can talk to you and bring you back from the abyss. Their cheerleader, cheerleader confessor, um, you know, supporter. Uh, there are a lot of things. A coach after the relationship is very complicated, but it's art and science. 
and it sounds like Gordy's found a good match to succeed Mike Smith with uh, Dathan. And we wish him best. And we think the OAC uh, on Athletic Club being sponsored by On Running is fantastic. I love seeing brands support the sport. You know, brands like Nike and Adidas and New Balance have done it for ages. And it's great to see On, which is a rather new brand. I mean, they've been around for a half a decade, but Swiss based, very fine product, one of the product leaders with Andrew Weeding and uh, I think it's Steve DeCoker. Um, they're doing good things and communicating that, hey, we're a brand that's going to be around for a while. And um, OAC being coached by Dayton is a big deal. And um, Gordy Beamish, best wishes. Thank you for your time and your sense of humor today. Uh, this is Lair Eater with Run Blog Run, and it's Socialing the Distance. And we featured uh, Gordy Beamish today. And please say you like us and check like on our social media and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, as Sally Field, the famous actress, said, oh, you like us, you really like us. Well, show us that, okay? That's how we make the bucks. That's how I can get my Major Dickinson's Pete's Coffee in my Starbucks mug um, in the morning because I'll tell you, man, getting up before 10 o'clock in the morning because I stay up most of the night is really a difficult challenge. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Take care.